Thank you all for joining us again on Becoming a OneDrive Ninja. Today we're going to be talking about how you can share files, okay? Our last video we talked about how you can take files offline. This one is going to be about how you can share not just some files, but it might be a folder or some other aspects, and we're going to even cover some advanced features as well. Because of that, we might have to split this video into two. Let's see how it goes, so let's go into it. It's important to kind of pause here for just a second because your administrator may not allow you to share things what's called, you know, anonymously or to everyone. They may say, you know what, if you're going to share a file, you have to share it with a specific person, which requires them to authenticate. So you may have some of these options that are grayed out. And if that's the case, that's up to your administrator and you'll have to take that up with them. So let's get back to it. So as we get back into it again, if I drop down the options right here to see what I have available for sharing, you're going to notice that anyone with this link option is grayed out. I can't pick it. That's because this folder has been deemed more important by the administrator and I can't share that with just anyone. I have to pick either someone inside my organization, people with existing access, or a specific people outside your organization. And then here you can allow them to edit. So let's just say I want to pick a specific person, right? And I don't want them to allow them to the ability to edit. And you say, hey, I, I want to, you know, block them from the ability to download. So if you hit that apply, what's going to happen is now it's going to give me the option to put that person's name in there. In this situation, I'm going to put Kaylee in here. So I'm going to say Kaylee Floyd. Um, so then it's going to say, okay, great. And if I hit send, it's going to basically send her kind of like an email um, and then it's going to send her kind of like an invite uh, for this if I hit send. I could just hit copy. What it's going to do at that point is give me that link like I did before, and I could just send it to her as an email. And, and that's kind of nice is, is that you can have different ways of doing it because maybe you might put it in a Teams chat, for example, so they can just go ahead and access the file. They, they don't want to necessarily look at their email all the time to access the file. So they want to do it that way. All right, so now let's look at how we can do that same sharing, right, um, in the web client. So over here on the web client, I can click here and hit share. And from there, I'm going into the same options like you saw before. Interesting, you see down here it says shared with. You start seeing all these people that this file has been shared with. So this is one of the differences that you'll notice between the web version versus the desktop version. You get a lot more insight about what's being shared. Something else I want to show you, too, is you can click here and you can say manage access. That's a little bit more of an advanced feature, but what's nice there is you can see all the people that have been given access to this file as well as the links that they've been given. And you can come here and say, you know what, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to go ahead and delete, delete that link. And it's gone. And they can say, eh, let me manage this one. I don't like that one. Let me delete it. And now the access that I've given to that person is now gone which is nice. Now, this is direct access that's been given based on your user administrator. For example, maybe they have backups or other things like that. So you might see some other things showing up here that you're like, I didn't give them access. How did they have that? That's a discussion with your administrator. So now let's go ahead and hit uh, the share option again. And uh, again, it's grayed out. Um, and I mean, it's, it's pretty much identical. You know, when I hit apply, I can put the person's name in there. Uh, it'll send it through as like an email or I can copy the link. Uh, so that's kind of the difference. So let's try doing it from another folder where I have the everyone access. So let's go to the marketing events photo. And let's say that I want to share this link right here to this picture, let's just say. Now, look, anyone with this link is there. There's some interesting options that you have with anyone with this link. Um, you now have the ability to pick an expiration. I really wish that they had this option for these other ones, but sadly, they don't. And I don't know why Microsoft doesn't allow you to do that. But let's pick anyone with this link. We're going to say we don't want them to have edit options. Let's say that we want to block the ability to download. And we're going to say that they have access to it to the end of the week. And you could even put a password on it and hit apply. So, and we could just say password, super easy. <laughs> and I'm going to hit apply. So now that I've done this, um, I could just copy this, right, uh, link, 
and pasted an email to a whole bunch of people in a chain and they could see this file. I could put their email address in here, which in this case, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hit copy and this is gonna give me that link that I wanna have. And let's say that we wanna manage that access and remove that link. So I can come back here, click the X here. I can change the date, change the password if I want, change the context. In this case, I'm just gonna delete the link altogether and now it's gone. And now they don't have access at all. That's some of the difference that you see between the sync client here, right? And the web client, you just have more contextual information. Something that's really helpful is like, if I know that I wanna manage better the sharing option on a file or a folder, let's say this accounting, you can come, when you go to right click, you can see where it says view online. If you do that, what's nice is it takes you right to that folder or file, and then you can access uh, the permissions or the settings for that file or files inside of it. So it's just a really very quick way to get you access to the web version of that file so that maybe you might want to change uh, settings that you know you can't change in the desktop version and you want to quickly get right to these files. That's just a quick way of getting there. Um, and you can do the same thing with the file, right? This file right here, I could right click and say um, view online. So if I do that, it just opens the web browser and takes me right to the file here. And from here, you can also do the same sharing options. And look, the dialog box is identical. So once you start to see this theme, the same principles apply, see? The same principles apply as you do if you're sharing it from the folder or the files, either in the sync client or the web browser or straight inside the file right here. You have that same access. So once you start to understand that, um, then it becomes much easier to manage how you can do it. So let's show you how you can do a folder. So let's say I wanna share this accounting folder. I can just right click and say share. And then from there, anything underneath there, or anything I add in there is gonna get the access that I give here. So in this situation, I'm just gonna say uh, a specific person. Uh, I'm gonna allow that person to have edit access and then I can put their email address in here um, and then I can go ahead and just send it to them and then they would have access. And then if you later on decide, you know what, I wanna remove anybody from having access to that, you can say, hey, um, I wanna view this folder. And it opens up here. Uh, so I'll go up to my files here and I can then manage access for that folder. And then in here, I can see who has access to it. And if I don't want them to have access, I can just delete them like I showed you earlier. The last piece that I wanna cover is under this shared section, and this is only available on your web client. So this is another reason why you want to be able to know how to do both. So under here, anyone that shared files with me, the sync client isn't great in helping me do that. So files that have been shared with me, I'm just not gonna be able to see them easily in the sync client. That's where the web client starts to become helpful. Let's say that a friend of yours has shared uh, in, your employ in, in your work, has shared a file with you and you want to be able to access it again, but you can't seem to find the link or the email. If under here you go to shared, um, this is where you get to see files that have been shared with you from someone else. So see, Kaylee has shared these files with me and here's the times that she shared it and I can go back in and look at these different slides and have access to it. You can also see the ones that you've shared with other people. So if I click on this tab, I get to see the ones that I've shared with other people. So these are just quick little easy ways to do it, to have access to these files and things that have been shared. So that can be really helpful when you're trying to find that file that you know someone shared to you through OneDrive and you're like, ah, I can't find that email that had the link or where was it in Teams. You can just come to here, go to shared, and you can see that file that was shared with you. You can even sort by the people that shared it with you so it's easier for you to find that file. A lot of times this is save my bacon. And you can even, once you get in there, um, which we'll show in a later video, that you can sync, if like say for example, uh, an individual shared a specific folder with you, you could potentially even have that folder sync to the sync client. So as they're using those files and putting files in there, uh, you, can, you can have access to that. We're not gonna cover that in this video, we'll show that in a later one. Hopefully you enjoyed this video where we're talking about how to share files and folders inside OneDrive. Keep in mind, it can be a little hairy when you start sharing it to begin with, so I would recommend you work with some friends when you're sharing files to get more proficient before you start sharing sensitive files uh, with people in mass. 
Stay tuned for our next video. We're going to talk about some pitfalls or other possible issues you may run into with OneDrive and how to avoid those and how you can address them if they do come up. See you later. Thank you.